Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to ICBM. In this mod overview we're looking at the Dawn at Midnight mod. Now before we kick off, as usual, mods change. It's the nature of the beast and that means that the mod can very much be different by the time that you're actually seeing it. If you want to play this total conversion, linked down below in the description, I would recommend that you first unsubscribe from all the other mods that you have currently subscribed to. Because mods generally don't work together, and if you have a total conversion, then more often than not, it won't work with other mods at all. Now, what does this mod do? Um, well, it changes the entire tech tree. Whereas other mods allow for some additions to the tech tree, or give you a few new units, this mod changes everything. Let's have a look at the tech tree. I'm not going to be doing too much actual playing in this uh, mod overview, by the way. It's mostly an overview of the mod, but I have a video coming out very soon with gameplay of the mod, so you can see some of these elements in action. Starting up at the top of the tree, we have different versions of aircraft. We have 3rd generation, 4th, 4.5 and 5th generation aircraft. Now, what do we start out with? Um, let's deploy a base and see. Speaking of we have a couple of different ones. We have the strategic airbase, the tactical airbase, and the naval air station. They each have their own specialty. Strategic airbase is one that houses a couple of fighters and a couple of bombers. Now, one thing that's really neat about this mod is that it adds, let's say, nation-specific vehicles to the mod or to your uh, particular nation. So instead of the B-47 that North America starts out with, the Europeans get the Vulcan Bomber. They also get the F-102 for a fighter, and currently I can only load those out with standard air-to-air -air missiles. They're not great, but they're just your, well, your average fighter. If I were to go for research and generation, or research uh, the third generation aircraft, I can upgrade my fighters, um, but only the carrier-capable ones, which will transform from an F-8, sorry, an F-9F to an F-8. We're going to have um, the carrier-capable attack aircraft MERV for, um, sorry, morph from an A4 to an A6, and the Vulcan bomber stays the same. Fourth generation aircraft changes the F-102 fighter into the F-15C. The carrier-capable aircraft becomes the F-14. The multi-role combat aircraft stays the Mirage 3. Carrier-capable attack aircraft becomes the F-18, and again, the bomber stays the same. Next, we get the F-15C, the F-18E, F-18F, which I believe is a different version. This is the F-18C, this is the F-18F, so an upgraded variant of the F-18. And finally, with fifth generation aircraft, you get the F-22 for a fighter, the F-35C as a carrier-capable fighter, the multi-role is the Tempest, F-35B fills the slot for carrier-capable attack aircraft, and the bomber becomes the EB-32. That is a lot of changes just for the aircraft. Now, Airborne Early Warning allows AWACS and carrier-capable AWACS. As for the other air bases, I have the tactical air base. The tactical air base is one that you deploy a bit closer to the front and that does not directly go after y um, your cities, or enemy cities rather, but is more of an attack bomber. Attack bomber slash fighter. These guys provide 15 fighters and 5 bombers. The bombers have a range of 15,000. This one provides 15 fighters as well, but provides multi-role combat aircraft, which only have a range of 5,000. So the range is drastically more for the bomber. 15,000 versus currently 5. But I got 10 attack aircraft versus 5 bombers. And then we have the Naval Air Station, which I think would be nice over here. It comes not with a sonar array. Beware that this is different from the Naval Air Station that you might recognize from Tarsus mods. Um, Tolis, the creator for this mod, has decided to go with a radar system only. The Naval Air Station houses a couple of carrier-capable aircraft, carrier-capable attack aircraft, and ASW name, this is a placeholder, for anti-submarine warfare planes. Um, they have radar, but they don't have sonar, but the sonar is provided by the ASW aircraft. These things, unfortunately, however, have a pretty poor sonar range of 
a mere hundred. That brings me back to the tech tree. Because one of the things that you can research, and I'll again, I'll try and go over as many of these as I can, is improved sonar systems. So if you have a submarine threat, you could argue that maybe it is time now to go for the improved sonar systems, then advanced sonar systems, and finally next generation sonar systems. This improves the um, ASW name, which is the patrol aircraft, submarines, boomers, destroyers, and the ASW helicopter. Now, tech tree, what else do we have? Um, the aircraft can be exceptionally customized. In the sense that you can generate different vi uh, generations of aircraft, but you can also put different loadouts on them. You get early air-to-air -air missiles, Cold War air-to-air, -air. we get all aspect air-to-air -air missiles, and finally the electro-optical air-to-air. Um, these unit icons change all the time. As in, the moment that you get upgraded to early air-to-air -air missiles, the upgrade changes to be the AIM-9 Sidewinder. Here it changes to... I couldn't really tell you, I'm not that well versed in missiles. Um, this, I believe, is the... the AMRAM, maybe? And this one, I don't know. Then, we need a payload to destroy some various targets. Laser-guided bombs, GPS-guided bombs, standoff glide bombs, and finally, the swarm standoff glide bombs. Keep in mind, these things take you 50 minutes to research. So you could have, uh, for example, the plan to go for a game that's going to last two and a half to three hours in-game time. This is going to take you about a third, if not half, of the game just to research the swarm standoff glide bomb. The same goes for early ASMs, which are the air-to-surface missiles. These go from early ASM, precision guided, standoff, and finally hybrid guidance missiles. And then we have early SAMs, and of course this is not so much uh, suitable to the aircraft. Early SAMs, allowing you to build a SAM site and places SAMs on ships. Improved SAM guidance, improving the SAM site, uh, but it does require 1960s electronics. What the hell is that? Well, that's down here at the bottom of the tech tree. You have a couple of smaller research projects, 1960s through 2020s engineering, and 1960s through 2020 electronics. So it's not just that you're going to research, uh, for example, phased array radars in 40 minutes. No, you'll also need 1980s electronics. So in order to research this, the game automatically selects all the intermittent research that you'll need. And while it may look like this is just going to take 40 minutes, it is, in fact, going to take more. Because you need early SAMs, that's 10 minutes, five, uh, 15 minutes, 35 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes already. And that's just SAMs. So expect your games to play out quite a while longer if you want to go for more research. What else? Well, there is so much more. We have the early SAMs all the way through the modern SAMs. And uh, when you have the, I believe, uh, where is it? Yeah, here. No, hold on. Improves mobile SAM. I'm not sure at, at what point you can build the mobile SAM. Yeah, here. So this is a bit weird. This improves the mobile SAM, but this thing actually unlocks it. So again, that's something that might need to be changed. And then finally we have modern SAMs. That Research, phased array radars, allows you to unlock uh, early ABM systems, so anti-ballistic missiles. Shoot down those ICBMs that are coming your way. That's 55 minutes, guys. Plan accordingly. If you want to turtle, you better get ready for a long haul of research, or spending a lot more of your production slash research slider towards the research, because you won't have the time. ASATs is a long time, 75 minutes. And I'm not even sure if that's telling the whole story because it also requires the research called Space Radar. So plan for a really long haul. Satellites, by contrast, are really cheap. Satellites are only 10 minutes. GPS is 25 minutes. Um, and I'm not exactly sure which one requires this, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be the cruise missile tech. 
Uh, yeah, here it is. The 1970s cruise missiles don't require it yet. But in the 1980s, we're coming up towards the Tomahawk age, and these do require GPS. Uh, then we also have the 2000s, the 2010s, and finally the 2020s cruise missile. One hour and 40 minutes. A hell of a long research. Again, these numbers might be different by the time that you're actually watching this, as the mod will have been developed further. Even if you slide this all the way here, uh, it's still going to take you an hour. And during that hour, you're only doing research. You're not building anything. You're not defending your positions using more SAM sites. You're not getting information by building more radars. You're just doing research. So plan accordingly. All right, what else? Um, more in the tech tree. And as you can figure out, I love talking about the tech tree because there's just so much here. You start out with standard chips. You first have to research nuclear-powered warships. So let me deploy the four warship types that you have available. Uh, surface combatants is what I'm talking about here. Starting off with the destroyer. Imagine that it is, I think, 1955, somewhere in that era. That means we get flak, naval flak. We also get naval or light naval guns and finally torpedoes, but with a terrible range, a range of 125. A speed of a mere 200. And as you can see, the sonar on the destroyers is already a lot better than the sonar that I have on this plane, which just is a 100 meter range. But then again, the plane travels at 350, so arguably it can cover a greater range than the destroyer, which might be more of a defensive asset when it's escorting an aircraft carrier. Next up, we have the cruiser. It's currently called a CA, a heavy cruiser. It comes equipped only with flak and light naval guns. That is it. It's all that they come with. They can be upgraded with SAMs, they can be upgraded with anti-ship missiles, they can be upgraded with anti-ballistic missiles. But that's gonna cost you. And that's gonna cost you a lot of research, and thus a lot of time. Next up, we have the heavy surface combatant. As you can see, it says BB, aka Battleship. They come with the naval flak, the light naval guns, and also the heavy naval guns. In one of the videos that I have coming up, you can see these things in effect. They're quite nice. And something that is pretty important. At some point, both the destroyer and the heavy cruiser give up their light naval gun. And when doing so, they lose the ability to strike land-based targets. That is only the terrain of the aircraft carrier and the battleship. Unless, of course, you research cruise missiles, and especially the nuclear-tipped cruise missiles, which can, in fact, do damage against the shore-based targets. Finally, we have the aircraft carrier, the CV. And as you might be able to tell by the unit icon, it is definitely a uh, early post-World War II aircraft carrier. It comes equipped with flak, naval flak. Of course, you can allow the air patrol as you normally do. They come equipped with 10 fighters, 10 attack aircraft, and an ASW helicopter. These things are very handy. Um, you could argue that this is not really supposed to be here, as an ASW helicopter is a unit that you probably wouldn't expect in the 1950s. Especially not when you look at the type of helicopter that it actually launches. An SH-60. Um, this thing only, notably, only has sonar. You might think that this is an AWACS bird, but it's not. It does not have a radar. And something else that you really need to keep in mind? The range. Only 1800 meters, oh, sorry, 1800 kilometers, points, whatever you want to call it in this game. They do come equipped with a lot of depth charges and two torpedoes. And of course, these things get upgrades and shift as you research more tech. And then finally, we have the submarine, classified as an SSK. I believe that's a non-nuclear submarine, a conventional sub. And that's because we can upgrade all of these things. We can upgrade nuclear-powered warships to then Cold War naval de designs, modern warships, and eventually experimental naval designs. Once you have nuclear-powered warships, the DDs become DDGs. That's a guided destroyer, so missile systems. The CAs become CGs, 
guided cruisers. The battleships maintain their status as BB and that persists throughout the entire line. But the aircraft carriers switch their icon slightly. Once you're going into the naval area of modern warships, then the aircraft carrier, the CV, becomes the CVN, nuclear powered aircraft carrier. It significantly increases speed. Also researchable, SeaWiz and Laser SeaWiz. This thing allows you to shoot down missiles, um, at least on paper. I haven't tested these yet. Didn't get around to it yet, because as you can see, there's a lot in this mod. Laser SeaWiz, uh, basically a better SeaWiz. Also, allows airborne laser to be equipped by early warning aircraft. That is pretty substantial. If you can use early warning aircraft to shoot down missiles, then your early warning aircraft, your AWACS, can suddenly be a very potent force. But, as you can tell, 1 hour, 34 minutes and 54 seconds till you get this thing researched. Submarines start in the 1950s, you have to research 1960s. This is when they become a bit faster, reduce weapon cooldown, make their engines stealthier, harder to detect. Allows you to research the SSBN, but also 1980s submarine, which is, I believe, the Los Angeles. Uh, this is, if I'm not mistaken, the astute submarine for the British. And this one is um, a 2030s design. I'm not even sure if there is a name for that particular icon yet. 44 minutes, but also requires 2020s engineering. That's the bad news, because that means we're going to have to go all the way through here. It's another 25 minutes of research. So, especially with this mod, don't plan on getting everything. Plan on becoming really good in one of the fields and use that to kill, or focus a little bit on everything. Become a little bit of a Joe of all trades, but expect that you will be struggling to do damage then. Torpedoes get upgraded, 1960s, 80s, 2000s, and 2020s. Improved shortwave radar, advanced shortwave radar, and AESA. Uh, that is, I believe, the best radar, shortwave, that is. Same way for longwave radar, improved, advanced, future. And once you have improved longwave radar, you also unlock space radar, over the horizon radar, and the early warning system. These are from the standard game. Sonar systems I mentioned, and then we come to the whole MRBM, medium range ballistic missile. You first have to be able to get something out at medium range before you get ICBMs. ICBMs have something really nice. ICBM silos normally only house one ICBM. But once you get to improved ICBMs, a missile silo does not hold one ICBM, it holds three. And that makes them particularly potent. Because you don't have to build three silos, you just have to build one. At the same time, it means that you're putting more ICBMs in one basket, if you will. If your silo gets destroyed, you lose all the ICBMs stored there. Also unlockable, heavy rockets, 10 megaton ICBMs. And finally, super heavies, 50 megaton ICBMs. Haven't tried these yet? Looking forward to doing so. MIRVs and false warheads work as intended, as standard. SLBMs, submarine launched ballistic missiles. These are required in order to actually get the submarine launched ballistic missiles working on the SSBNs. This is required research in order to build the SSBNs. Uh, what else do we have? Advanced MRBMs allows an MRBM to be much harder to intercept and also to frag into a MIRV, if I'm not mistaken. Then, thermonuclear bombs, boosted fission weapons, these are pretty standard. And this is important, tactical nuclear weapons, changes the way that the short-range ballistic missiles that you might normally see on the cruisers behave. They no longer exist, they're gone. Satellites and GPS, I explained, advanced optics is still the same. Laser space weapons allows you to shoot down enemy missiles. Preferably just after takeoff before they split into a MIRV. And then we have a couple of the supporting techs, electronics, um, laser guidance, practical laser weapons, and finally advanced, or sorry, early uh, electronic warfare systems, advanced, so no, improved electronic warfare systems, 
Um, and let's see, these unlock... Yeah, these unlock electronic warfare aircraft. How exactly they work, I haven't tested. It's a huge mod, and I wanted to get the video out pretty early. And this way, there's still something left to explore for you guys. It ends with the advanced early warning system... No, uh, electronic warfare system. And then, enable armies. I don't know what this does. I don't know what this does. I researched it, nothing happened. It, it also says 20, so it's probably 20 seconds. How it works, what it does, I don't know. Alright. That was a lot of talking. Let's see if I can actually get some action going. Now, we're a little while later into this game. Uh, one thing that you see happening quite often, especially in the Mediterranean, when you're Europe slash West Asia slash Africa, you build or spawn in a destroyer, you spot a radar site, the radar site spots you, and you immediately start blowing it up. In this case, that is no longer possible. At least, not if, you st if you're going to go with the standard text. My radar sight has a range of 700, and this heavy cruiser only has a range of the gun systems, which in the case of the heavy cruiser is 400. So that heavy cruiser is going to have to come really quite close in order to start doing damage to me. I'm going to now engage this heavy cruiser with my battleship. So I'll park the fleet here and just have the battleship go after it. All right, the battleship is getting into range. Uh, one question that you might ask, how is the AI in this game? Do they use the new techs? Uh, yes, they do, to some extent. One issue that I found currently with the mod is that it is really, really happy, the AI, to start using missile vehicles and SAM sites. I have seen entire continents get filled with SAM sites, just tons and tons and tons of them. And the short-range missile vehicles they do a little bit of damage, but not nearly enough to actually be a threat. So, what I have found that, by the way, is the battleship firing. And as you can see, it is a battleship, so it's just missing. And now they're engaging each other with the shorter range, or well, shorter range weapon systems. Another salvo, and now I'm getting more accurate. Anyway, um, the AI does use these new techs, and the new techs, to some extent, change the way that the game is played. Especially as the short range, sorry, the short range ballistic missile, the SRBM, they seem to be causing a ton of pollution. That's something that needs to change because games are over really quickly. Now, the battleship and the heavy cruiser are still slugging it out. Uh, it looks like the heavy cruiser is not going to win this because the battleship just has a ton more health. Another salvo. But you're just doing gunfights. In the meanwhile, what we had happen over here was that an enemy aircraft carrier group sailed past Iceland and decided to just wipe out whatever I had there. There we go. And as long as the destroyer from Russia has the access to its gun system, it is trying to do damage successfully against my radar site. So unfortunately, destroyers can still definitely be a risk, but it changes later on in the game. Later on in the game, they lose their naval gun system, and they just really don't have that much capability to engage shore targets. Or maybe they do, but I haven't found it yet. All right, let's see if I can show you some more tech. All right, let's have a look at this skirmish over here. It's the destroyer and the aircraft carrier that just sailed past Iceland, and my submarine's been able to find them. It's a fully stocked submarine. No upgrades whatsoever. No sonar, no better torpedoes, nada. I'm going to try and engage the destroyer first. It does come with torpedoes and seemingly also has access to SAMs as the Russian destroyer has an extra icon that my destroyers don't have. I only have three, which is the naval flak, the naval guns and the torpedo, but they also have access to surfaced air missiles. Now, let's see if I can actually do some damage against that DD and still walk away alive. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. What I think happened there was that either the torpedoes have been updated or the aircraft carrier's um, anti-submarine helicopter dropped a couple of depth charges on me. The problem is the anti-surface warfare helicopters, the ASWs, they don't really go back to base in time. And when they do do that, they just crash, especially because they have such a short range. So currently, the current version of the mod, make sure you have a couple 
Well, maybe have a couple of them on standby in reserve. Just so you can replenish your carriers when required. Now, as we have seen, that destroyer was a hell of a threat to my submarine. But how can the battleship do against an aircraft carrier? It looks like these aircraft have not been upgraded yet. The destroyer uh, is still not packing anti-ship missiles. But similarly, my battleship is only still packing heavy naval guns, light naval guns, and naval flag. And let's see how well it's going to be affected against planes. As you can see, not too much. It truly is no longer the area of the battleship. Battleships need to be escorted in order to do their shore bombardment duties. If you don't have an escort, don't bother sending out a battleship because they are really big, really bulky. And unless you have them properly updated, they are just pretty weak. Sure enough, um, if the enemy has no assets to strike you with, then they're great. But the moment that they get access to any kind of weapon system that will do damage to your units, good luck. Because it's not going to be pretty. You're going to take a lot of damage. Uh, in this case, by the way, I have access to the cruise missiles, which means I have access to anti-ship missiles. But the battleships don't get them. Or at least not yet. Maybe at a later tech, but so far I haven't seen it yet. So, the battleship against this cruiser, um, this balance right now could still very much go towards the battleship, especially as I am in my own territorial waters, and I'll get repaired, and the cruiser won't. But at some point, the cruiser will just simply outrange me with the anti-ship missile, because the anti-ship missile has a range of 650, and the cruiser, or sorry, the battleships have a range of 450 with the heavy naval guns. So, these cruise missiles, or these, these naval guns, uh, no, sorry, these missile systems, Let's have this guy engage. These cruisers don't have cruise missiles yet, but they do have SAM technology, and I don't have that. So they can simply shoot down my cruise missiles, my anti-ship missiles, and do uh, no damage to this cruiser. Or at least very, very little. So this is where the battleship comes in and might be able to do some damage, since the heavy cruiser cannot shoot that down. Now, one thing that surprised me greatly was that a destroyer is seemingly able, with its naval flak, so long as it has it, to shoot down cruise missiles, or anti-ship missiles, rather. So, um, that was quite an interesting surprise, as the ships were really not taking that many hits. Now, as you can see, my cruiser is not doing that well. It has been able to do a little bit of damage against the cruiser. But the heavy surface combatant, much, much more so, doing damage against the other cruiser. So the naval warfare is very much 1950s as of right now, or early 60s, as far as the cruise missiles go. Uh, or actually, I think the, the tech is a bit farther for me. Yeah, I have 1970s. We're 45 minutes into the game, game time, but I have researched almost nothing. Research alliances in this mod, very, very, very important. Now, I'm a little bit deeper into the tech tree, and the battleships, the heavy surface combatants, as they're technically called, now have access to quite a few loadouts. I started out with the standard loadouts. That's the uh, weapon conf config heavy naval artillery. I get the naval flak, the light naval guns, and the heavy naval guns. You saw those in action, and the SAM. But I now also get conventional cruise missiles. These things, I believe, are going to be very effective against units ashore. And the range is substantial. This is not even their final form. This is 1980s cruise missile tech. You get to 2020s, you can expect Production that these complete. things get a lot more range. Another loadout that you can see is the VLS Refit. Vertical launch system. Starts with conventional cruise missiles, the anti-ship missile and SAMs. Giving up the naval guns. So you're no longer using those. But I imagine that the ship rate of fire for, well, all of the missiles is going to be far faster. 
We also get the nuclear cruise missile config, which allows you to bring with you 40 nuclear cruise missiles. This does mean with 40 nuclear cruise missiles that you first have to have them. Because the game says, sorry, no warheads in stock, you can't ill equip that loadout. And finally we have the nuclear ballistic missiles, which I don't think I have fully researched yet, because all I'm getting is anti-ship missiles and SAMs. The cruisers currently have multi-mission loadouts. They still get their naval flak, light guns, SAMs, anti-ship missiles and conventional cruise missiles, but can also be switched over to the nuclear cruise missile, but they don't get as many. They get 20 versus the battleships, 40. Destroyers don't have a new loadout yet, but they get all the weapon systems. Anti-ship missiles, cruise missiles, SAMs, torpedoes, flak, and naval guns. Lots of firepower for the destroyers, and I'm still researching new destroyer tech. A little while later, a couple of my ships have been upgraded. And in due time, because it is now the Russian fleet that has come down past the... Uh, the Arctic countries, sorry, the Scandinavian countries, and they are currently looking to kill off my naval air station. They have a pretty good chance of doing that, because I still haven't upgraded my aircraft, but my destroyers and the cruisers have taken some updates. As you can see, sort of, these are F9Fs, but the Russians get the Su-9. They also get MiG-19s, which is another nice detail as carrier-capable aircraft. My strategic airbase scrambles a couple of fighters, trying to intercept. Um, I'm not exactly sure what tech this is for the carrier-capable aircraft, but they're only loaded with bombs. They're definitely trying to sink my cruiser. The cruiser only has standard SAMs, but anti-ship missiles are much improved, and the conventional cruise missiles can potentially also be used in a much more aggressive fashion. So, let's engage. Uh, the conventional cruise missiles are based This is also quite nice, and now I have access to SeaWiz. I hope the recording is still functioning properly because I'm getting a couple of uh, error messages here, but um, let, let's continue. I now have access to SeaWiz, close in weapon systems. These are able to shoot down missiles. Unfortunately, these guys don't carry missiles, so I'm not sure how effective they're going to be in this fight. What I want to research next is, uh, well, you know what, let's see if I can complete the naval tech tree. Let's run this fight down, shall we? I wonder how much they can do against this destroyer. I'm a bit too close. I don't have to be this close. Same for the cruiser. They're now damaging me with the guns. But I've probably deplaned that aircraft carrier. Now the destroyer can't hit me, but I can hit it with my cruise missiles and my anti-ship missiles. And they cannot shoot me down. That's exactly how I would like it. A new challenger has decided to arrive next to Ireland. It's a battleship, a heavy service combatant from Africa, escorted by two destroyers. Now, I don't actually have um, a lot of firepower here, but I have a guided cruiser. And that guided cruiser is, so far, pretty capable of just staying out of range of the battleship. Now the destroyer is trying to do some damage against it. Yep, and there you heard it. That was the Sea Wiz. That was the close-in weapon system. The destroyer probably... There we go. It's... It... Yeah, that's it. The African destroyer is using anti-ship missiles. The battleship doesn't have them. Now this missile is uh, attacking the anti-ship missile, but you also hear that that's the closing weapon system. That's trying to keep the missile away from the ship at all costs. Unsuccessfully. <laughs> that one got through. But this one cruiser, in its far upgraded variant, is doing quite a good job at holding its own. There we go. Killed one. Let's rush the experimental naval design. Well, 
One thing I would like to see changed is the noise of the sound effects. The Sea Wizard noise is too loud, and the same can be said for the noise that uh, the flak makes. The flak puffs are just really noisy. Now, I went full research, which means with no production, the ship does not get repaired, so I should keep moving. Something weird happens here. I keep killing off this destroyer, but it keeps spawning in a new one. I don't know why, I don't know how. <laughs> Research I'm launching complete. more and more cruise missiles at the battleship. And I now have a fully upgraded cruiser. The icon has changed. I couldn't tell you what kind of ship class that is. Uh, let's see what the destroyers now bring to the fight. Sorry, I can't tell. The battleships... Probably not that much of a difference. Yeah, the heavy naval artillery lost their their small naval guns, but they did trade in for Sea Whiz. Uh, VLS refit also gets the Sea Whiz. Yeah, everything gets Sea Whiz. Uh, what did destroyers get? Let's have a look. The destroyers are now traveling at a blistering 90 points of speed. I still don't know exactly what measurement that is. 90 kph, maybe? They have Sea Whiz, SAMs, torpedoes, anti-ship missiles, and conventional cruise missiles. These ships can relocate very quickly from one position to the next. This is at four times speed. Um, expect these to potentially outrun other ships. An aircraft carrier like this one can do only 65, so it's not nearly as quick. Now, let's research something else and see if I can show you some more of this mod. As I'm researching some new tech, I have my battleship skirmishing near Istanbul with a SAM site. I was trying to use cruise missiles against it, found that it wasn't really that effective, and went back to the good old ways of the heavy naval guns, um, which were, of course, impossible to stop by the SAM site, and it was very quick to make short work of the SAM site. So, when all else fails, if you have the heavy surface combatants, you can always use their standard naval guns. These guys also gained an additional weapon system, which is the nuclear ballistic missile, allowing them to carry 20 MRBMs, as opposed to just the naval cruise missile, or sorry, the uh, nuclear cruise missile. Nuclear cruise missile has, well, I'm not even sure if it's a fair com comparison. I believe it has less punch than an MRBM. This is a 100 kiloton TNT equivalent. Um, I'm not sure whether these can be used against surface targets like cities, but I think they're much more efficient when targeting, for example, ships. As you can cause a large nuclear explosion, and that has a very serious threat to a larger naval group. Let's see if I can get this guy with a cruise missile or two. Production complete. Turns out not really. Alright, let's build one missile silo. They look a bit different. Much more like an actual silo. And now let's go for the full research on the improved ICBMs, because that's what I wanted to show you. Speed this along a little. There we go. Whoa! Somebody's not happy to see me. Oh, something else I wanted to mention. Um, you can have severe mismatches in your technology. I have a CVN, so a nuclear aircraft carrier, uh, that has fully been upgraded in the sense that I have naval experimental designs. It increases ship range or ship speed, reduces weapon cooldown, makes the ship RCS, uh, reduces the ship RCS. I think that's radar cross section, so it generally makes them harder to target with a missile. Anyway, um, my ships have been fully upgraded, my aircraft carriers. But they're still sporting aircraft from 1950s. So keep that in mind. Anyway, what I wanted to show you guys was this guy. The naval... Sorry, the missile silo. Normally, a missile silo carries one silo. One ICBM. One launch spot. Not anymore. I now have three. And I can immediately target several different targets as I see fit. So I can target uh, as long as they're not inside a minimum range can target Karachi, Bombay, and Delhi. And this is what happens next. Three missiles originate from the missile silo. 
And it looks like it was West Asia that fired the first shot. But I can shoot back pretty quick. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you're putting a lot of nuclear eggs in a nuclear basket. Uh, the more eggs you put in the basket, the more attractive this basket becomes to get killed off. So be careful. Maybe missile silos in larger quantities are not really the way to go. Now that's the last bit I wanted to show you of the mod. Um, for the rest of it, you get to explore it yourself. Subscribe to it on the Steam, the Steam Workshop, linked down below in the description. And just test. Have a look at what the best strategy is that you like. Maybe you want to go uh, with a bunch of submarines, which I barely gave any attention to. Maybe you're interested in seeing what swarm standoff glide bombs do. Have a look. Have some fun. See what these things do and go ham. Preferably against a human player. I'll be playing a lot more of this mod. I'll be doing more videos on it, so you can expect one to be uh, coming up very soon. And, uh, well, there is just a lot to unpack. A lot of tests and... There will probably be mistakes in this video, stuff that doesn't quite work, stuff that I didn't explain properly. Um, unfortunate things, <laughs> but these things happen as I'm discussing a mod. Anyway, hope you enjoy what you're seeing, have fun playing this, and let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching, have fun.